this part of series of lectures on clinical skills so today we'll be discussing general principles of history taking the doctor and the patient clinical methods are the skills doctors use to diagnose and treat disease they are acquired during a lifetime indeed they evolve over time many medical students feel that history taking is very simple and examination is more difficult with a lot of clinical science but an experienced physician will know that or they will be knowing that the skills needed to elicit a proper history is much more than that of eliciting physical findings there are two steps in making a diagnosis first step is to establish the clinical features that, that is how the disease occurred what is the natural history and what are the findings so this is the clinical database from the patient's history and examination you get a data and then you have to interpret this clinical data in terms of the disorder of the body functions and what are the potential causes or the etiologies for this so this is what is being done in clinical examination that is you get a clinical data from the clinical data with the laboratory investigations appropriate laboratory investigations you go for interpreting what is underlying pathology or, or what are the abnormalities etiologies of the problem so for this a proper history is important if you have got 20 minutes i used to say spend at least 10 minutes for taking the history most consultations are occurring in the op but at times it may be in the ward maybe in the casualty or even the community the format followed is structurally same but the application will be a little different in each setting and each clinician will have their own way of taking the history and doing the examination and this will be evolved over time so in the op when the patient enters itself you should make the uh, initial impression so you can look at the patient and see whether the, the patient is anxious is the patient is maintaining eye contact what is the body demeanor in which the patient is coming how is his dressing etc should be looked for or we can say that even before the patient reaches your room your examination starts many diseases like significant anemia jaundice neurological problems like parkinson's the pill rolling movement all these will be obvious when the patient reaches the consultation room the surrounding should be pleasing not only to the patient but also for you and you should be comfortable and patient should be comfortable so setting the scene is very important for a right handed person you make the patient sit on the left side and that is a better way rather than making the patient opposite your table and confronting with the patient so this is regarding the seating arrangement that you should look for now we go on to the history taking how will you start the history taking we all know there is a written structured format for presenting the history part but that may not be applicable always for example when a patient comes with a clinical problem he has got lot of anxieties and rather than asking what is the problem with which you came you may go for little more factual data like this is uh, what was his occupation what were his past diseases he had his smoking history his alcohol consumption the drug treatment over the counter medications and a family history all these will make the patient at ease and you will have factual data before going on to more emo- emotionally challenging situations for example somebody comes with chest pain he may be very much worried about the cause of the chest pain so starting with this problem this basic data will make you and the patient at ease hope this point is clear now we can go for asking why what is the reason by which you have come to me today each patient will give their own version somebody may say um, my wife asked me to come and see or madam my 
family doctor has asked to go and see all these are relevant because the you will get some idea related to the patient and their perception of the disease from these now how will you start there are two ways one is a patient oriented history and second is a physician oriented history the initial part you allow the patient to talk don't interfere is always many times you want to interrupt many studies have shown that doctor is interrupt within 1 minute so allow the first 2 minutes allow the patient to say you ask why do you come or what are your problems let him explain and you respond so that is what is the ideal way of doing so there are two ways of eliciting one is the open ended questions that is indirect way of asking why do you come where is the pain is the pain shooting is the pain bursting this sort of direct disease oriented question should be avoided as far as possible so what i mean is you should have a patient oriented rather than a disease oriented a disease oriented question usually the patient will try to please you and always give yes or no many patients may peter on the bush they may be talking about unnecessary things then you have to steer and mold the story so ask in between you can ask them during questions and see that the patient is not going out of the way or you can say can you go back or i it is not clear to me can you please repeat something like that and again you track the exact story and during history taking it is very important to look at the non verbal communications because many patients may be telling that i am not at all worried but their facial expression will feel that you can identify where they are anxious their hand so when the patient says i have just pain and they keep the hand like this that means that they get some information regarding what is the nature of the pain etc so this non verbal clues should be taken seriously next is regarding the vocabulary many times a patient say vertigo what the patient means by vertigo may be a dizziness or it may be actual rotation or somebody found unconscious also they may say he had vertigo so always clarify the terms because many medical terms are used by people like arthritis sciatica fits seizure so a lot of terms are there so always try to assess what the patient means and what you understand by these terms so again very important next step is think about the severity so how will assess the severity of the problem the severity can be assessed how it affects the daily or day to day activities for example model may be having a skin lesion on the face it may be very much distressing for them but the same thing for an ordinary person may not be very important or for a musician a mild defect in the joints or the moment there is some difficulty in moving the hands it may be devastating for his profession but it may not be very significant for a ordinary person so the perception of the patient is something which we should always look at so another thing is pain somebody may say very severe pain but actually this is their perception regarding the pain so identify how it affects the activities of daily life then many patients will will not say the major complaint they may be highlighting unnecessary things but again remember the patient will say what bothers them maximum we expect that the patient will tell chronologically a proper story but it will be seen only in a minority of the patients so this is just an introduction to history taking in the next session we will be discussing how the how an actual history is taken and the what, what is the scheme in which the history taking is being done routinely okay thank you bye